The difference between realism and portraits are just that. Portraits are just the portraits of their face. Portraits can or cannot be realistic. You know, you can have a portrait of somebody that's got a little more stylistic to it, but realism is always going to be realism. You know, you're always going to try and achieve exactly how that photo looks. Uh, but whether or not that's a portrait is, you know, here or there. The hard part about it is you're only working off one or two photos, so you have a general idea of what this person looks like, but these people have known them their entire lives. So to give somebody that and, and it actually look like the person uh, is really tough, you know, because you're only working with what you're given. I like uh, references with wrinkles, with facial structure, with highlights and shadows. Um, I'm not a huge fan of baby portraits because there's not a lot of um, a contrast going on. It's a lot of smooth skin. So I like tattooing old people. I like tattooing uh, iconic people that people know and they look at it and they're like, oh snap, that's so and so, you know. I got into tattooing when I was 14 years old. My dad took me to a tattoo party and uh, they sat me down in the chair and they asked what I wanted and I had no idea so my dad said just put his initials on his arm. So I got my initials in Old English on my arm in a garage at 14. I was in high school, I was in freshman year, so I walked around the school with my sleeve up, you know, as it's healing and I thought I was a, a total badass, you know, I was the only kid in school with a tattoo. And then one of my buddies uh, offered to sell me a tattoo machine for $20. I don't know why I thought it was gonna be a, an actual machine, but it was a homemade machine. It was made out of a, like a big pen and a remote control car battery and things like that. So I, I took that and I started fucking up my friends. You know, I started making them bleed and scarring them up real bad. And, and it's been doing the same thing ever since. I've been tattooing portraits for about 10 years or so. The micros are fairly new. They're new as of, as of this past year. Uh, but I've always been drawn to portraits. As a kid, you know, Realistic stuff was always around me, you know, Bob Ross was on PBS, he was on TV, so I got to watch him. And then there was this commercial, it was like a learn how to draw, and they sent you this little pamphlet and it had a little bear in it with a hat and it had a house. And uh, it showed you how to draw both of those, so me and my cousin would just get a bunch of those for free. It was always the same images, but you know, it was like free drawing material. Usually my first step in creating a good portrait tattoo is finding a reference. You know, if you need to find a good reference uh, and the more photos you have, obviously, the better, uh, you know, the better pick you have from. So the first step is to try and find a really nice photo with nice lighting, nice contrast that's nice and clear. And then secondly, I'll load it into Photoshop and I, or my iPad and I will desaturate it. I'll take all the color out and I'll play with the tonal variations. I'll bring out the darks. I'll add a little more extra uh, highlights in there just so it has a little bit more 3D structure. So I'll load in my reference into my tattoo stencil app. I'll press a button and my stencil's made. Uh, and from there I'll put it on the person, we let it dry, and then we start to color. I use an outliner. I don't necessarily use outlines, but things are lined, uh, if that makes sense. So like noses, eyeballs, uh, even the outside of a face, if you don't have some kind of like a uh, lining structure, it could appear too soft and when it heals it could fade out over time. So you do need some sort of structure in there, you know, where there's dark spots where you can hide outlines. You're still outlining but they're being hidden. Again, it kind of helps the noses pop off the face, it helps eyeballs, uh, you know, stay nice and bold, ears, etc. They're there, they're just hidden. Lisa Left Eye was one of my favorite ones to do just because she's an old school icon from back in the day. And not that she's been forgotten by any means, but it's nice to bring her back, you know, bring her back from, from the 90s and and uh, show her some new life. I like Walter White a lot. Breaking Bad was one of my favorite TV shows of all time. So I got to tattoo uh, uh, Walter White on somebody's leg and that was really fun. I like doing those sort of tattoos. I prefer black and white over color portraits just because it's easier on everybody. It's easier uh, applying the tattoo. It's not as messy as a color. With colors, colors tend to go everywhere. Uh, it dries on the skin a little bit more. So you have to wipe a bit more, use a little bit more soap. Uh, that tends to hurt a little bit more because you're normally going wall-to-wall -wall color. You're going full saturation, so it's going to be more painful. With a black and white tattoo, you're doing a lot of uh, feathering in, um, which can be a lot more delicate, and it hurts a lot less. Also, it's, it tends to be a bit quicker because, for me personally, I don't have to 
be in my head trying to decipher, you know, is this the right color? Is this the right color? I have to rinse this out. I have to do this with black and white. It's just very streamlined. You know, you can go from dark to light to dark and, and you're, you're really shaving off hours. How do you tell if somebody's a good portrait artist? I look, again, I'm looking for technical ability. I try to see like the needle marks that they have and, and, and see if it's really in the skin, you know, or if they're just shaping their tattoos with the redness of skin, you know, which means that they aren't going as deep as they should and they're just kind of um, like yeah, beating up the skin in a way that makes it look good, but when it heals, you're gonna lose all that because they're not punching it in as they should. When I first started getting into portraits was years ago, and of course, Nico Hurtado was uh, the first one that I saw doing that kind of work. It was a lot of color portraits and things like that. Uh, and then I saw Bob Tyrell in a magazine and I saw what he was doing. And, I, and uh, Paul Booth, although they weren't necessarily portraits, he was doing a lot of like crazy, weird, realistic imagery. So I saw all these old school guys doing that stuff. Uh, Tom Renshaw uh, was another one. And at that time I realized that that can be done with a needle. You know, before I was just doing a lot of like bullshit, like let's get them in, get them out. And then I saw that stuff and I was like, holy cow, that's possible. You know, that's what I want to go for. I want to do the hard stuff. I want to do stuff that people are like, holy cow, that's amazing. I have one and a half portrait tattoos. I have a colored Robocop on my leg from Nico and my buddy Garrett Harper uh, is working on my grandma on my inner arm. But I'm not a huge fan of portrait tattoos myself, it's just something I like to do. I do want two little uh, Milli Vanilli tattoos somewhere, I think that'd be rad. So dark skin portraits can be a little tough. Uh, I have a general rule of thumb. I will just, n instead of, of normally using four or five shades of black or tones of black, I'll use three. I keep it solid black, dark, and then there's a light shade. Um, it, it can be uh, a little challenging because you don't have the ultimate white, the ultimate highlight in there. You know, you're using their skin tone as the highlight, which if it's dark skin, you really have to bring the whole image down. You know, you have to uh, just really make sure everything is a lot deeper. Because if you were to tackle it the same way that you would tackle a normal portrait on pale skin, you're gonna end up with a very like washed out looking tattoo after it heals up. You know, it's not gonna have that, that strength that it needs. When it comes to longevity of tattoos and portraits, um, when people squeeze in a lot of details, I do sometimes think that those won't stick around forever. If they're done well, they can. However, I've been tattooing uh, a really long time and you can kind of see some things, how they come back in five, six, seven, eight, ten years, and you see what holds and what doesn't. So you see this in other people's work and you kind of just know to yourself that it's not going to last the way that it should. However, I would almost rather have uh, something that I could go back in and touch up in the future rather than something that's too dark, you know what I mean? So it's almost like a painting that's gotten a little bit older that could use a bit sprucing up, you know? So it's not necessarily a bad thing, um, especially when it's done like a painting. If it's not all finished in the first session, you go back in the second one and really tighten in details, making sure they stick, things like that. So I guess it just depends on the technical application of who's doing it. Working with portraits and trying to get it uh, as close to the image as possible, you know, I think is a really difficult task, so I like to take on the more difficult things, you know, and uh, see what comes of it.